friends, we are here for day one of the Luna Sew Along. So uh, I'm really excited for this sew along. I love my Luna um, loungewear sets. And yeah, I'm excited to share that with you. We have a lot of information to go over today between fabrics and adjustments and cutting. So yeah, um, I'll give it a couple of minutes for some more friends to join us and then we will get rolling. Hi, welcome Dee Dee. So, um, oh my goodness. So there's a lot of options with Balloon loungewear. Um, you can sew individual pieces or you can sew complete sets. I think for this sew along for our giveaway, I'm going to count every piece as an entry. So if you do a cami in the bottoms, then you have two entries. So you will have to do, when we get to that point at the end of the week, you'll have to do a post for each piece, but I think that's how we're going to do it. So, um, but we'll go over that later in the week. So we have the cami, we have the nighty, we have the bralette. And you can combine the bralette with either the cami or the nighty and have that built-in shelf bra, which is awesome. And then we have the shorts or the capris. And yeah, <laughs> so one, two, three, that's five different things that you can sew in one pattern, which is amazing and awesome. So um, let's jump in to, it is, 3.30 in South Australia right now. Titi, you are, man, you're committed. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you are either up really late or up really early to join me. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go over fabric. So what you'll be seeing in the blog, where'd my sheet go, is this. This is double brush poly and I love it. I like double brush poly anyway. I I tend to be a cold blooded person. So hi Allison. So um, wearing double brush poly year round doesn't bother me. You set your alarm. I love it, Dee Dee. Um, um, I, I do get warm if I'm like outside for long periods, but inside I'm always freezing. So I wear double brush poly year round. I love it. This is, um, it's called Cynthia on Terracotta. And all of these fabrics are from Surge. So Surge is our sponsor this month. And um, she does have a code for us. It is um, L-N-S-A-L, so Love Notion Sew Along, L-N-S-A-L 10 off, I believe. It's in the event, so. Um, go there to double check it. So that's what you'll see in the blog. This is amazing. And then this is an extra, this is that. So this is what I will be sewing live with you. This is, this is a French terry, but it's a reverse French terry. So the loop is on the right side and then the wrong side is smooth. And this is called Daisy on Denim Reverse French Terry. I just thought it was really pretty. You are welcome, Claudette. So yay, so Reverse French Terry. I've never used a Reverse French Terry. It's a really, really small loop. So, and it's soft. So, and it has a very good wrong side and right side. So this is what I'll be sewing with live with you. And then, Oh, okay, so then I picked a couple of fabrics that I'm really new to. So this is coffee, coffee color in a pilos knit. And you guys, it looks like woven. Like this looks like a woven fabric, but it's knit. Like you can see the stretch has a nice amount of stretch. It has good recovery. Um, I did actually sew the, um, arm bindings with it and it worked great so it's like I said it looks woven but the difference between woven and knit fabrics they're made out of the same fibers 
it's how those fibers are tr um, woven together, essentially. So a woven fabric, they literally go over, under, over, under, like um, when we do those pot holder looms. So you go over, under, over, under, and like it would be like, if I don't break my fingers, <laughs> it would be like that. Um, for a woven, so woven, they're woven threads. Knit fabrics, the threads are knitted together in that same pattern that you see a scarf done in. So it's the same cotton threads, they're just knitted and that allows it to have some natural stretch, it's called mechanical stretch, without having to add spandex or lycra to the material. So this, the fibers are knitted, they're knitted together but some magic way it makes it look like a woven. But it's, look at that drape, it's awesome. I have such a fun hack for that. You guys wanna, eh, maybe. Oh, okay, I'm gonna share a sneak peek with you for a hack later in the week. Look at this. I did a gathered front on this and this is gonna be a nighty. So, yay, I, this, I'm excited about this. So that is the Pylos from Surge. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And then this is Dusty Olive Montego Slub Stretch Woven. So this is an actual woven. So our fibers are woven together over, under, over, under. And you can actually, you can see, I don't know if you can see them on the screen, but in person you can actually see the the way the fibers are done so woven fabrics are going to fray and the fraying will amount will depend on how tight the weave is so you can't do the cami from a woven but you can do the bottoms in a woven so um i think don't hold me to it because i i didn't cut to check it um, i think if you actually did enough gathers on the front and the back you could do the cami in a lightweight woven. So um, that has not been tested, but it adds quite a bit of ease to it. So I think you could do it. Um, other fabrics, pretty much any, any knit is going to work great for this. I would stay away from the really lightweight slinky knits for the bands and the straps. So that it would make a nice cami, but I would use something else for the straps. So, um, and then your bottoms, you would want a lightweight woven, um, like the khaki bottom weights would be too, too heavy weight. So like a rayon, chalice, or something like that would be good for your bottoms. Cotton lycra, um, flannel works for the bottoms. They're a little boxy, but they're comfy. Um, that's what I did my muslin out of, was a flannel. Where are those? I don't know where I put them. They're around here somewhere. They have the seven dwarves on them. So, um, really large variety of fabrics that would work with this. Oh, I forgot to get my elastic out. All right. So, okay. Elastic. So, <laughs> I just throw it all down. So, there, okay, let's start with the knit binding. So the knit binding is this right here. You want a knit that has a good recovery factor. So I did use the double brush poly for the front of it and it works well, but you might want to shorten the straps if you did them from a double brush poly, just because like I said, it doesn't have good recovery and it tends to stretch. So everything okay? Okay, good all overs. Um, so that's our knit binding. Um, next up is some fold over elastic. So if you're not familiar with fold over elastic, it's softer than traditional elastic that you would put in your waistband. And see that line down the center? That allows us to fold the elastic in half and it's not bulky. So there is typically two sides, this shiny side is usually the right side. You, can, I have done the matte side out, so you can, whichever you like, but then the matte side. You can also find printed 
elastic. So this is fold over elastic and then it would just fold like that. Go talk to your father. So, well, honey, your switch case is in your book bag. Oh. So that is, sorry, um, <laughs> fold over elastic. It has really nice recovery. It's nice and soft. You don't want to use this for the waistband, but you can use it for the straps and the binding. And you can even use it for the bottom of the bralette. All right, and then we have lingerie elastic. So you have a couple of options with lingerie elastic. It can, oh, I meant, I always forget to look up the pronunciations of things. Um, this pretty edge here, it's spelled P-I-C-O-T. I think it's pronounced Pico, Peacock. I don't think that T is pronounced, so. Um, that's one type. This is actually a plush back elastic. So this is often what you would find in your bra where one side is brushed and soft and then the other side is just smooth. So you would want to position the soft side against your skin. So that's the soft side. And then you can't really tell the difference in the camera. So smooth side. And the, there we go, and soft side. So can you see those? It's really nice. And you can get this in varying widths. And then you can also get it where it just has the straight, both sides are straight. And you would apply them in very similar ways. Okay, we would did the knit binding, fold over elastic, lingerie elastic. And then you want just regular elastic for the waistband. Um, one and a half inch wide if you're sewing the women's. I think the girls is one inch. I'm, I'm not recalling that right now. And then you want elastic for the bottom of the bralette if you're sewing that option. And that is three quarter inch, I think it was, plush back elastic is wonderful. But if you just have regular three quarter inch elastic, that works great too. Isabel, you're still teaching. Great, Isabel. We, I hope to keep that you get to catch it later. So um, those are our elastic options. You're going to, oh, power mesh. I've never used this before. Confession time. Big confession time, you guys. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting live week because everything I have touched on this pro project, I have had to redo and not just redo once but more like two, three, four times. So this could be a really interesting week. Um, but this is Power Mesh and it's super stable, has a great amount of stretch and it's nice and stable. So um, this is an option for your bralette or the um, built-in shelf, either one. I, and it can give you more support than say like a cotton like or that double brush poly like I made this little double brush poly bralette it's super comfortable there's no support in it but it provides coverage so <laughs> its job is done so if I wanted more support with the double brush poly I could just layer this um, power mesh with it all right so that's our fabrics everything there except for these fold over elastics is from Surge. So um, lots of great options over there. You can get all of your elastics. She's even selling needles now and thread and rotor blades. Like you can get it all over there. And then go to the event for, or the, it's been in the emails too um, for the code. So, all right, we need to talk adjustments. So I, posted on the blog some pictures of adjustments and whatnot really this pattern has a nice amount of ease it's really forgiving very minimal adjustments are usually required knock on everything um, I'm a firm believer I say it every time other than blending sizes and adjusting for length so the pattern as is your first run like just give it a go. You don't know how it's this fit is going to fit your body until you do that. So um, typically, I need to scoop out the seat 
of the back crotch curve and um, I have a full booty that's where all the difference is between my you can see right here how straight I am from my my waist is up here to my hips it's so straight all of the difference between those is right back here in my bum so I have to typically scoop out that crotch curve some more this is a nice relaxed pant I didn't have to do that I did end up needing to raise the rise an inch in the front just because the waistband hit me like right here and I have this pocket of squish <laughs> right here and I like to either go under that or over it and so I chose to go over so I, I did adjust my front rise which is not a typical alteration for me um, usually I do adjust the back rise I did not on this so you're tall so you need to know where to adjust for length especially the shelf bra okay so um, to adjust for length on the pants just add it at the bottom of the pant unless um, you need it in the rise then add to the rise but if you have a long inseam the pant has a straight hem so you can just and I don't think I added this picture on the block you can just add straight down see that black line I just extended the hem like an inch or so in that illustration so if you need to add length there go for that the cami for adding length you want to use the bust line and the waistline adjustments for that so hold your pattern piece up to you about where it's going to sit actually it sits real low I tend to like more coverage up so I always go up and then adjust the um, bust line and waistline to match your bodies start at the top and then work your way down so if you find that the bust line is too high for you then you want to start there add your length and then hold the pattern piece up again and then evaluate where that waist is and then after you have those adjusted evaluate to see if the hem hits you where you like it. So um, to blend out sizes on the cami, you want to use a long gradual line. So this one goes from, we're going out one size down to the waist. So you can see that it's the, it would be that yellow highlighted line right there. To blend sizes on the pant you do the same thing you just use a long gradual line so here we're going from I think it is to the medium out to the large at the hip and then and these pictures of the pants are on the blog and then for the going in you would do the same thing just in reverse this is going out from a large and into a medium if you are like one or two size differences between your hip and your waist you want to use your hip for your measurement that's the size that you need but then if your waist is larger or smaller especially if you're doing knit just adjust the elastic there's enough ease that you should be fine to get away with that um, if you are like several several sizes difference and I would like I would say like say you're you have a super hourglass figure and you really cut in at the waist and then I would blend down probably two sizes and then adjust the elastic more for that but really adjusting the elastic should be fine for um, your waist how can I adjust the height of the neckline of the neck 90 I use the straps to adjust the height of the neckline so I ended up shortening my straps one inch on the fold which shortened them two inches overall because I do tend to like it a little bit higher up that is going to affect where your bust line hits but I am short from shoulder to bust anyway so I typically have to adjust that anyway so by shortening those straps I didn't have to 
adjust the bust line of the pattern. Um, for me, it was just trial and error to get that length right on the strap. I made one up with the straps as designed and then um, you can just baste it in place and then um, try it on and then pinch out how much excess you have and then adjust the pattern that way. Other than trying it on and basting those on, I don't I don't know of an accurate way to measure that and so to me it's just easier to try it on, pinch it out, transfer that over. So I hope that helped that question Rose. So um, scooping out the back and adjusting the rise. So if you need to scoop out the back, whew, that yellow line right there, you just, however much you need, it varies for each person. This is typically about how much I normally have to do. So, um, but again, I did not on this. And then if you need to adjust the rise, you would just extend up just like that yellow line shows. But again, sew one as is, use some super bargain fabric um, and just sew one up. It's such a quick sew, really. Um, so just do that. I use some little novelty flannel for my bottoms and that was it. So um, you can use an old t-shirt in your donation bin to size up the cami and see how that works for you. So lots of options there. Um, oh, the full bust adjustment. So you can just blend out a size. So say you need a size medium for your upper bust, but you need more room for the um, for your full bust. You can. So you would cut the medium and then just extend over to the next size out and then use that for your side seam and then you could blend back down if you wanted to. But um, that's one way. If you have a full bust and you need that extra length, I posted the photos on the blog. But essentially, you hold your pattern piece up, mark your bust apex, that's the most full part of your bust, and then See how this line right here kind of goes out to where about my shoulder seam would be? You can guesstimate it. It's okay. You would draw that line right there. This line is completely perpendicular to the side. Again, it's going out from what was my bust apex. And then you go straight down. And then you cut it apart, except for leave a little piece right here so that it creates a hinge and then I tape this to my table and then you take your side seam and swing it out and measure this difference right here so if you need if your bus measures two inches larger than the measurement on the pattern piece you need to add half of that to your pattern piece because we're cutting on the fold so you would create a one inch gap right here by swinging this side out and then this, the hem is gonna go down, so then you would slide this piece down to match the hem, keeping it in line over here, slide some paper under it and tape it all in, all in place. So that would be how you would do a proper full bust adjustment. I bounce between, depending on the time of the month, my weight fluctuates like crazy. Um, but I bounce right around needing or not needing a full bust adjustment. I have a four to four and a half inch difference between my high bust and my full bust. I don't do a full bust adjustment on this. I don't know if that helps you guys or not, but that's my personal experience with it. Oh, and then moving the straps in for narrow shoulders. I would just use a smaller size. So you can see how the medium comes in more. I would just use a smaller size and use that guide. So I would, let me get something to mark this so you can see it. Blue. So I would come 
if I was a, sewing a size large, and you're going to have to pretend that that medium line is completely there. I would cut like this. So I would, well that scooped it down more. Okay, well, you would want to go up. All right, so basically I would use this and come in more, and then if you need the height of the large, I need to cut it. Can I cut this in? I need to print a new one and assemble it, but you would want to use the smaller size. I'm going to, I'm going to work on this for tomorrow and I'll see if I can get this. I don't know if I have time to add it to tomorrow's blog post, but I can talk about it tomorrow. But that's what I would do. I just need to figure out a simple way to verbalize it. So <laughs> that's, that would be one way. You just need to move this in. You might just be able to cut that off, move it in. I'll figure that out. I'll do that tomorrow. I don't know if I can get it added to the blog post, but um, I will get it added for tomorrow's live, and then we can talk about that um, then. And then I'll try to get it added to today's blog post so it's in the right spot. All right. Cutting our fabric. Cutting patterns. So um, I have... Two cutters. Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna read Mariah's. If you want your waist and hip, if your waist hip is the same size as pattern size and you only need room at the bust, you can cut off the waist length and line before you do the full bust adjustment. Yes. Yep. You can do that, or you can also blend back in. So yep. Mariah is on point there. She knows. Hi, Joy. I'm glad you could join us. We are sewing, or we're going into the first steps of the Luna Loungewear Sew Along. So we're talking about fabric, fit adjustments, and cutting fabric out. So, um, cutting. For cutting out the paper pattern, I use my yellow rotary cutter. This is my old one. I did not come up with this on my own. I believe it was Tammy that shared this tip with me quite a while ago. So much faster than using scissors to cut the paper. And then I have my white one for cutting my fabric. And for keeping my um, fabric in place, I use these big washers. So I just get them from the hardware store. They're cheap, they're cost effective, they take up very little room, and um, they work really well. Um, if you have a projector, we now offer projector files. I have one up there. I'm not very proficient at it. I, I'm trying. Paper is my comfort, um, but I'm trying. I did cut out my blog post ones all with the projector so um, it's too bright in here for me to do it um, without darkening the room and if I darken the room during the video then you can't see me so I'm not going to do that during the video but um, you want so for cutting let me move all my stuff so when you cut, I like to cut with my fabric folded, especially when I'm cutting two items. So it's, it's like my mirror image is already taken care of. And when I fold my fabric, I like to fold it right sides together. And then if by the off chance I'm using like chalk or something like that to mark it. Then I'm not marking on on the right side. Oh, this is so soft on the inside. <laughs> Sorry, distractible. All right, so if I'm cutting my cami or my nighty, I don't line up 
both of the salvage edges. Like, don't fold it in half all the way like that because you're wasting precious fabric. Only fold it over as much as you need to to fit your pattern piece on. And take the time to make sure that everything is folded straight and on grain and all that. So you're only folding it over as much as you need. And see, I can even, can you see? Yeah, you can see. I can even move this over a little bit more. Just like, just like so. So you want to make sure that you're folding on grain, that everything is straight, and only fold over as much as you need to to get your pattern piece to fit. So just like that. If you're short on fabric or you don't know if you have enough, take the time to lay everything out beforehand. I have a ton of patterns over here. What is this? All right, we're gonna go with it. Okay, so I would just lay everything out and kind of puzzle piece it to make sure that everything fit if I was questioning if I had enough fabric. Right, like that would be the shorts and one piece of the top. And then I would cut after I have, I've ensured that everything fits on there. You want to make sure that you transfer all of your pattern markings. So we have, where did my pocket go? The pocket has these circles. Those are going to tell us how far into the pocket we're sewing when we're attaching our side seams. Can we ever get the pretty, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, right, the, so she's asking about the pretty pattern weights. So I actually made this one, Snea made this one. And these were made for a retreat, so we've had in the past. Eventually, I would love to offer to make the ones that I make, but time permissive is not an option for me right now. So down the road, I would love to offer these to you. But yeah. So that's the pattern weights she's talking about. I'll get there eventually. I just, I need to get some things done first. So you want to mark those pattern markings. I use clips or pins, and so if my fabric is cut, so we're going to pretend this is our fabric, I would just clip it right there and clip it right there to mark those. And same with this triangle marking. You have that on the front and the back. I just throw a clip on it and line it up. Actually, I have, because I need to sew these still. Right there, those are my markings for the pocket. So that tells us where the top of our pocket will be. And then our front, wherever it went. That's, I have two bags. <laughs> so on our front one, which I don't think there is a front, we have that marking for our buttonhole. So right there. And if you want to make a step easier, go ahead and mark this center seam as well. So for that, 
I like to actually use a pin. And I think it's Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, I go over sewing the shorts. And you'll find out why I prefer a pin there. So um, go ahead and mark that. For marking the buttonhole, there's Taylor's chalk. There's, um, you can do a Taylor's tack there. I think this, this is a sew line pencil. It's a chalk pencil. It's pretty nifty. I don't know if it would show up on the white of this French Terry, but um, the Taylor's chalk comes in different colors as well. So you want, if you're gonna sew the buttonhole, you want to mark that as well. So get, get all of those pattern markings marked. In the blog post today, I linked a, another blog post that I wrote about pattern markings and tools and all the different options there are a ton. I have developed this little habit of collecting notions. So it's a very, very dangerous gateway. <laughs> so I like having options and I use different ones for different things. So, um, I'm going to check through the comments real quick. So, we've got the height of the neckline, height, height, height. Mandy's shop surge on Thursday. Surge ships super fast. Like, oh my goodness. If you ordered today, I'm not going to speak for them, but in my experience, odds are very, 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 very good that you would have your fabric very soon. So um, I know they did just have a sale over the weekend. So I don't know if that's affecting their shipping times or not, but they are wonderful. So, um, oh, our binding. Uh, you need to transfer this star piece also on your binding. So make sure that you transfer it from the right end. So, um, that's super important. So transfer that while you're transferring marks. I used a clip for that also. So um, I know that one way, an old school way of transferring those marks is to cut a notch outward into the seam allowance. So don't cut it into your pattern. But that's always been finicky for me. So I just mark it with clips and pins and all of that. Look at me trying to be a little bit organized. This is how I store my patterns is in um, large manila envelopes and then they go into a filing cabinet. So um, who's wonderful fabric? So we have Joy, we have Surge Fabrics. Uh, Surge Fabric Shop is our sponsor. So that's where I got all of my fabrics from for this and they are linked in our event group and in the blog. So, any other questions? I don't have my watch on, I don't know what time it is. How far have I gone? 140. 40 minutes, that's pretty, pretty average for me for day one. So, get your fabric cut out, transfer all of your pattern markings. Tomorrow, we will sew a KME bralette 90 something. <laughs> And we'll be doing the fold over elastic. No. I don't know. We're doing binding and something else tomorrow. <laughs> I should have checked beforehand. We're doing two finishing options tomorrow and then one the next day. I think. I think I did fold over elastic. I don't know. I had a really hard time figuring out how I wanted to break down this sew along because like the cami is two seams hemming and adding straps so um, it was more difficult for me to organize how to break everything down and it's still a jumbly mess in my head so I need to print off my cheat sheet so I know what's going on <laughs> with everything so that's all I have for today. See, I told you it's going to be a really interesting sew along. Everything, everything I have touched with this sew along has been a wild card. 
<laughs> so if you want an adventure this week, you're in the right spot. All right, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna get this cut out so that I am ready to go for tomorrow. I want you to do the same. And for those of you sewing along with me, every Luna piece, every Luna piece that you sew this week with me is an entry into our giveaway. So we will, oh, somebody looked for me. Mariah, oh Mariah, you rock. Okay, I did elastic or knit. Awesome, thank you Mariah. Um, so every piece of Luna that you sew this week, and at the end of the week I'll create a blog post, you'll enter a comment with the picture of it, that's an entry. It's a $50 gift certificate from Love Notions and a gift certificate from Surge Fabric as well. So um, sew along with me for a chance to win those. And they both go to one winner. So, okay. <laughs> Glad. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. So I will be back tomorrow think at one o'clock. I need to check my schedule. I'm all over the place this week with um, classes and work and sewing. So I think I'm doing one o'clock tomorrow. I need to double check that. So I'll figure that out. I'll post it and we'll have fun this week. All right. Thank you for joining me. I will see you tomorrow.